Welcome everyone to today's session. Before we begin, I would like to note that this session will be presented in English and there is the option for live French interpretation. If you would like to access the French audio channel, you will find a globe icon in the bottom menu bar in your Zoom screen that will allow you to change the channel from English to French. If you have any questions, please feel free to add those to the chat and our production team will follow up with you. We'll get today's session underway in just one second. And with that, <clears throat> good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone joining. My name is Ryan Kennedy and I am GCNF's program officer and I'm thrilled to welcome everyone to the opening of the 22nd Global Child Nutrition Forum, offered as a virtual event for the first time in its history. We are grateful for the positive response from our global community to come together this year and join us as we reflect on the importance of school meal programs and look for further opportunities to work together to improve school meals around the world. This opening session will feature addresses first from our Board of Directors President, Dr. Ron Kleinman, and then from our Executive Director, Ms. Arlene Mitchell. Dr. Kleinman is the Physician in Chief at Massachusetts General Hospital for Children, the Chair of the Department of Pediatrics at the Massachusetts General Hospital for Children, and a Charles Wilde Professor of Pediatrics at Harvard Medical School. And he has shared a pre-recorded message, which we will now play, and that will be followed directly by a live address from GCNF's Executive Director, Arlene Mitchell. Hello, I'm Dr. Ron Kleinman, President of the Global Child Nutrition Foundation Board of Directors. On behalf of my fellow board members and the GCNF team, welcome to the 22nd Annual Global Child Nutrition Forum. We're thrilled that you've joined us and we're looking forward to the next few weeks of teaching, learning, and sharing that we'll all do together. I'm grateful to work with all of you in service of the children around the world who will benefit from our efforts. I'm very, proud to, to, I'm very proud to lead the Global Child Nutrition Foundation. We're a, a small but mighty organization that leverages our extensive network and expertise to ensure that children around the world have access to nutritious food in school. Our flagship program, the annual Global Child Nutrition Forum, is the largest international conference on school meals in the world. It offers an opportunity for the school meal network to come together to learn and share their programs. Unfortunately, for the first time in the history of the forum, we're not able to be together in person to learn and share. As we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic has wreaked havoc on school systems and disrupted school meal programs around the world. This health crisis is rapidly compounding existing food security issues and creating new challenges in ensuring that children have the nutrition they need to learn and thrive. Vulnerable children are being deprived of a daily meal at school child hunger has surged to levels that we haven't seen in recent history. The damaging effects of this pandemic will be felt by generations to come. The crisis has, however, created a critical moment for school meal supporters and champions to come together to imagine a new and more resilient food system, one that not only provides a meal, but invests in local agriculture production, supports community-based entrepreneurs and businesses and creates opportunity for children, their families, and their countries. So I offer you a challenge. Throughout this forum, consider what the new world of school feeding might look like in your wildest dreams, and how you plan to contribute to this new world. What would you like to see? What stakeholders would be involved? What new partnerships could be created? Who could benefit from this new system? 
These are some of the important forward-looking questions that we'll need to consider together. I'm grateful to all of you who are joining us in this challenge. I look forward to building this new world of school feeding with you and to ensuring that every child has the nutrition that they need to learn and thrive in school and beyond. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Arlene Mitchell, the Executive Director of the Global Child Nutrition Forum. Esteemed colleagues from all over the world, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the 2020 Global Child Nutrition Forum. This is the 22nd year of the forum, but it is the first to be held in a virtual format. This is also the first time in many, many years that we have not co-organized the forum with two partners, a host country and our longtime partner, the United Nations World Food Program, especially the WFP Center of Excellence in Brazil. While WFP is not co-organizing the event this year, they're very much a part of this 2020 forum. And before going any further, I'm sure everyone watching will join me in extending congratulations to the World Food Program colleagues for being awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. It's a well-deserved honor in recognition of the work you do to reduce hunger, <clears throat> often under very extreme difficult conditions. The last forum was held uh, not quite a year ago in December of last year in beautiful Siem Reap, Cambodia. And in addition to the core conference activities, we were treated to great food, cultural events, and tourist attractions throughout the week that we were there. My favorite parts of the forums have always been meeting all of the par participants in person, visiting local schools, and learning more about the host country. So doing the forum virtually is really challenging, but we are excited that this virtual format will allow more people to attend. For those of you that have attended the forum in the past, we welcome you, welcome back. For those who are attending the forum for the first time, we're delighted that you're joining us and hope that this is the first of many opportunities that we will have to interact with you. This is a chance for all of us to make connections across borders and to find support and friendship during a very challenging time. For those who don't know the Global Child Nutrition Foundation or GCNF, we are a small, independent, non-political, nonprofit organization that works to encourage and help governments to invest in nutritious and sustainable school meal programs. Even if you don't know us, I think it's quite likely that we know you quite a bit about you, not about you personally, but about your country's school meal program. This is because last year, 85 countries with large scale school feeding programs gave us a lot of information in response to our global survey of school meal programs. If you're participating in the forum, it's quite likely that your country responded to that survey. We've studied the responses carefully and we've learned quite a lot. I'll share a few pieces with you in a moment, but first, I want to thank our survey team and all of the many, many government officials and partner organizations that helped to complete the survey. We also want to thank all of our funding partners for their support, especially the United States Department of Agriculture, who provided some of the funding for the 2019 survey and for a second round of the survey to be carried out next year. If you'd like to know if a survey was submitted for your country, or if you would like to learn about other countries' programs, or if you just want to know more about the survey in general, go to our website, www.gcnf.org. 
We have posted summary reports for most of the countries that responded to the survey and will soon be able to post the remaining few. We're now working on a report of the global results and we'll share that in the future. Today though, before we launch into the new world of school feeding, the theme of this forum, I'd like to briefly mention a few things that we're learning from the survey. <clears throat> Probably the most important thing we've learned is that most countries consider school feeding to be extremely important. There are a few exceptions, but what is most impressive from the survey results is um, the level of investment in school feeding being made by countries, um, the governments of, of low income countries in particular. There are many examples of this, but I'm going to highlight and congratulate just a few of those. First, I wanna congratulate Burkina Faso for how they've tried to prioritize feeding their children despite the difficulties their country faces. For the 2017-18 school year, the national government committed nearly $38 million for the program, or 82% of the total program budget. Similarly in Nepal, 83% uh, of the fund program funding in Nepal came from the national government in the 2017-18 school year. When they reported for, that they also reported that they were planning a significant expansion in 2018-2019. Another example of government commitment is Bhutan, who told us last year that their government has taken on complete ownership, funding, and management of the school feeding, of school feeding in their country as of 2019. <clears throat> These and other examples are extremely encouraging because government support for programs is essential for sustainability. It's probably no surprise to you all that um, the survey shows that countries have prioritized school feeding um, in primary schools. All 85 countries surveyed said that they provide food at the primary school level. We were pleased, however, to learn the amount of attention paid to preschool. About two thirds of the country also target preschoolers. We know that adolescent education is important, especially for girls, and that providing food helps to keep, keep them in school. But less than half of the countries reported uh, providing uh, food in, at the secondary school level. Now I'm gonna give you a, a, a small quiz. Do you know which country has the largest program in the Western Hemisphere. I'll give you a couple of hints. It also has, it's also one of the three largest school feeding programs in the world. It reaches 70% of its primary and secondary uh, school age population. And it also feeds preschoolers and youth studying in vocational and trade schools. Pretty impressive. This is a country in South America. I suspect um, that you can get this one. It is, it's Brazil. Brazil, we congratulate you for your extraordinary accomplishments in reducing child hunger, improving nutrition, and supporting small scale family farms through your program. Only one of the countries that responded to the survey reported that they uh, provide school for university students. Can you guess what country that is? I'll give you a few seconds, but I think this one is gonna be harder. It's Kazakhstan. We congratulate Kazakhstan for, for uh, supporting its university students with food. Another highlight that we learned this year is that 2020 um, is Uruguay's 100th anniversary for its program. So we congratulate Uruguay on that accomplishment. 
Overall, we heard from over 100 countries, including some that couldn't participate in the survey for some reason, and some that do not currently have national or large scale school feeding programs. A few of those said that they are hoping to start new programs. And on that front, we're very pleased to report that the government of New Zealand has started a school feeding program since our survey was conducted. And we understand that the Canadian government is planning a program as well. And we hope to learn more about these two new efforts during this forum. The survey was conducted throughout 2019. We started in January and wrapped up in December. And countries where we're asked to report data from the previously totally completed school year. So most countries reported for the 2017-18 school year, or for countries that uh, where the school year is in the calendar year, in the same calendar year, they reported on 2018. A lot has happened since then, but we believe that no matter what has happened to your programs, the 2019 survey can serve as an excellent tool for advocating for the programs. The advocacy workshop portion of this forum will actually highlight how to use survey results for that purpose. COVID-19, the pandemic started in late 2019, and it continues to um, seriously affect most countries. In light of this, we're treating the 2019 data as a baseline against which to examine the impact of the pandemic. So we plan to gather, uh, to begin gathering data for the 2021 survey a bit later than originally planned in mid uh, 2021. This is so that we can capture the impact of the pandemic on one full school year, most likely school year 2021. As Dr. Kleiman said, we're all affected by COVID pandemic. And while specific circumstances differ, we're all, regardless of where we live or what our rules are, we are all dealing with this big new challenge on top of whatever challenges we were already facing. Of course, I, of course our first concern in, in, with COVID-19 is to take care of our families and ourselves. We know that many have lost loved ones and colleagues. On behalf of GCNF, we extend our sincere sympathy. We also send well wishes for those who are ill or have been ill. We must also be concerned for the health and safety of students, teachers, and other school workers and colleagues when schools are open. We've designed this forum to provide examples and guidance on that topic gathered from different countries, organizations, and experts. We struggle with how the vital services of education and school feeding can be sustained when schools are closed or threatened with closure, when rules and guidance are constantly changing, and when financial and political priorities are diverted legitimately toward health. This will also be a topic of this year's forum with examples from a number of countries and institutions. We hope that the forum sessions will give you ideas for managing your own situations and a chance to share your experience if it might help others deal with their challenges. No matter what the crisis or, or issue, our neighbors may be best positioned to understand and to help. There are regional meetings built into the forum schedule to allow you to discuss common interests and do some joint planning. I received school meals when I was young. I also worked in the school cafeteria. I've been working professionally on school feeding since 2000, so for 20 years. And this is my 16th Global Child Nutrition Forum. I have seen the positive impact of the annual Global Child Nutrition Forum with my own eyes. 
you can see the progress from year to year. And I know the power of school feeding, especially homegrown school feeding, where the food is purchased locally and invests in the economy. Its power is that it addresses multiple pillars of development in one program. It addresses education, nutrition and health, agriculture, economic development, gender, partnerships, and more, all in one program. School feeding is the umbrella to pull these parts together, to protect and nourish the world's children in, the, in a way that they may thrive. Our friend Jean White, a hero of school feeding, famously said, peace begins when the hungry are fed and the future begins when the hungry are educated. There is a new world of school feeding and it is a challenging new world. But together we can address the challenges. We can define what this new world will be. And we can feed hungry children and educate them for a better future, <clears throat> even if we must do it quite differently than we have done it in the past. With that, I declare the 2020 Global Child Nutrition Forum officially open. Thank you. And with that, thank you so much to you, Arlene, as well as to you, Dr. Ron Kleiman, for those uplifting and encouraging words and for offering this challenge to us to do our best to take advantage of this opportunity to imagine what a new world of school feeding could look like if we all work together. For those of you who have joined this session, as we opened this year's Global Child Nutrition Forum, I encourage you to join us again in an hour for our next session, in which we will be reviewing the forum communique from last year's forum in Siem Reap, Cambodia, as well as the last several forums in which we see growth in the points of priority that our forum participants has, have emphasized that we need to address collaboratively. And we will also be laying out the process for how we will be developing this year's formal forum communique. For those of you who might be new to the forum, and for those of you who are returning once again, we would love to have you join in this process as the forum communique represents the collaborative voice of the global school feeding community in clearly defining what our collective focus needs to be in the coming year and in this year, more than ever, we need the voice of our entire community. So once again, thank you all for joining us as we officially opened this year's virtual forum, and we hope to see you all again soon. Thank you so much.